Hello, gentle marketers. Welcome to the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and using a gentler approach to marketing. I'm Sarah Sinecroce. I'm the host on this show. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. And if you are a regular, welcome back. It's nice to have you with me again. I wanted to record another raw episode. Uh, this is recorded today, uh, Wednesday, March 18th. Uh, some of you already know I'm based in Switzerland, so right in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. And um, yeah, the kids are home from school. It's our third day in self-quarantine. Um, we are still allowed to go on s outside, uh, not like uh, in Italy or, or Spain, for example. Um, but everything is closed. Stores are closed, except for grocery stores and pharmacy and banks, etc. Um, and uh, schools are closed. Uh, kids are not allowed to play in the parks. So, yeah, you could say that it is um, quite depressing, and at the same time, uh, the sun is shining, uh, the birds are chirping, spring is out, and so it, it's a weird, a weird kind of time to to uh, to be in. That's for sure. What I wanted to do on this episode is um, kind of record the session I did yesterday with uh, maybe you were there, um, but if you weren't, I hosted a collective brainstorming session on how to stay resilient in these uncertain times. And so I thought, well, for those of you who couldn't make it, I would just record what we discussed. Obviously, uh, the session was beautiful because people were actually showing up and, uh, you know, interacting and sharing their fears and sharing also how uh, they plan to help their community, serve their community. So it was a beautiful call. Um, and at the same time, I think the information um, could also just be helpful, um, even if you weren't there. So that's why I'm recording this extra episode. Um, I also think that uh, it would just be weird if I would just keep going and, you know, releasing the regular episodes on Friday. So uh, I have this platform, so why not use it to to support you and, and help us support each other during these uncertain times? So the way I started yesterday's call is by reading this poem by uh, Brother Richard. He's an Irish priest in Ireland, and maybe you've already seen it on Facebook. It kind of went, went viral. Uh, it's a beautiful poem about, about optimism and about you know, the positive outcome. So I'll read that to you, and then we'll go into the content I shared yesterday. You may want to close your eyes unless you're walking somewhere in the woods, um, but it's almost like a meditation, and that's how uh, we did it yesterday. So here we go. Lockdown. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But... They say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and remember that, 
Yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now, today, breathe, listen behind the factory noises of your panic. The birds are singing again, the sky is clearing, spring is coming, and we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. Isn't that beautiful? From there, I then started a conversation around different ways that we can use to stay calm and and anchored and mentally and, and physically fit in these times of uncertainty. And, and we talked about the stance of being and doing and how as entrepreneurs uh, are doing depends so much on our being and I shared in the last uh, episode the last raw episode how I was stuck for a week and I couldn't write in my book I couldn't come up with any creative ideas because I was just stuck in this frozen state of anxiety and 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 I think we need to actually be with those feelings so that we can then move on to uh, free the space in our brain to open to creativity. So it's always this dance between uh, the being and the doing. And uh, one way you, we can look at that is, um, I like uh, Tara Brock, her books and her podcast are amazing. And she uses her framework called RAIN, uh, R-A-I-N, and those letters stand for recognize what's happening. A stands for allow the experience to be there just as is. I stands for investigate with interest and care. And N start, stands for nurture with self-compassion. So really just allowing these feelings and, and realizing wow, this is, this is big, you know, this really hit me and I don't know what to do with it. I feel like um, an animal that is in, in, that, in that frozen state because it's panicking. So allowing those feelings and, and kind of sitting with them and investigating, yes, uh, but with care and self-compassion. So, so that's the first state before we go into any doing. And often, as entrepreneurs, if we're in this panic mode, we think, oh, my God, um, you know, all these people canceled my trainings. What can I do to make more money? How can I make money this month? And it's all about this doing that we, we get into. And instead, uh, we can't. And then we feel even worse because we're beating ourselves up because we're not doing so Instead, I think it's just there's a time where you just need to sit with these feelings and say, this is difficult. I'm not alone. There's so many people right now who are dealing with this. And let me be uh, self-compassionate. Let me sit with this pain or this fear. Um, So that's the first step. And then we talked a lot about trust. And I kind of touched on that already in the last episode um, trust that really that this belongs, that this is part of our evolution, that we need to go through this in order to come out on the other side with something more beautiful, something that makes more sense. Because right now, let's be honest, before this started, nothing made much sense anymore in, in the global scheme, political scheme, uh, so much, so much, uh, pain really already uh, but it needed to get this bad and I I said that in, in previous episodes as well and that's what astrology uh, taught me really that things are 
the way they are supposed to be right now. So that we need to deconstruct old systems in order to reconstruct new ones. The other thing that really helps me, and, and spring is beautiful for that and really helps us, is to trust that nature always prevails. That, yes, we're talking about climate crisis, but in the end, nature nature will prevail. Uh, it's the human that we should be worried about. So look outside and look at you know how nature comes back and and the moon is always there the stars are always there so nature will prevail and and there's this beautiful video by julia roberts if you google julia roberts nature video you will see um a beautiful video that she did i think it was for nat uh, National Geographics. I'm not sure now, but but um, basically talking about that very topic, saying that um, and, and she she uses her voice as the voice of Mother Nature, which is beautiful because it's from her perspective, Mother Nature, and and it says basically I'm fine. It's it's the humans that are uh, struggling. So so trust that nature will prevail. The other thing also that um, is beautiful right now is that even though we are asked to you know, distance ourselves, in the end, this will bring us closer together. And we see signs of that, like it was in the poem, uh, Italians singing across uh, from their balconies. Um, other ways I see in, you know, in the entrepreneur communities, people helping each other and knowing that we're in this together. Uh, it seems like, um, and it's funny because the politicians, they still maybe are, well, they're understandably, they're worried about their countries. But the other thing we need to understand that this cannot be um, locked out of our countries, right? This is a global thing. And I think that's also what this what virus will teach us is that we have one planet and we're all on this planet together. So you cannot lock out a virus. Um, even if you want to lock borders, the virus is already in your country. And, uh, and so we're, we're really in this together. And, and uh, I see it already with, you know, the, luckily we have all this technology that we can use in order to connect with each other. Uh, um, we, we use uh, FaceTime, we use um, WhatsApp here in Europe a lot, uh, Zoom. I mean, all, these technolo all this technology that we can use to communicate and still stay in touch. The other thing to trust is that this increased mindfulness, the, the fact that we have more time by ourselves, in our homes, more quiet time, time to go inward, that this increased mindfulness will lead to something beautiful, to something different that hopefully is less about consuming and, and striving and, and always more, but it will hopefully teach us the essentials, what really matters. Um, we are all right now stuck, you know, in quotation marks, in our families. And, and, and so for some people, that, that is, is really different. Like some people are constantly traveling and they never get to spend time with their family. And right now, that's what they're getting the permission to do. And I'm really hoping that for some uh, of these people that will really switch something in their minds and, and, and they will start realizing what really matters. So um, I think there's a lot of uh, positive things and, and, and if we trust in this positive outcome, um, I think we can really get through this together. So it, I think we're being asked to surrender and then open up to the possibility that something greater and better um, is waiting for us, and that this is all this is all part of the big plan. That this is difficult right now, um, but it it is it, it was needed. Really, it was needed. 
So what I then shared were a couple of things, activities, um, tools that um, I'm using and that other people also mentioned uh, on the call we're using for the being side. So what can we do uh, in order to to anchor ourselves, to center ourselves? And, and so some of these things were... Um, Yes, this mindset, the trust, uh, exercise. So keep a regular routine for exercising. If you still can uh, go outside, walks in nature are definitely helpful right now, again, because of the trust in nature. Meditation, meditation um, definitely helps me. Um, there's a lot of free options out there. I'm using Inside Timer inside timer app um, everything is free on there um, where if you just google uh, meditations on on youtube you'll you will find lots of those as well another thing that um, janice on the call brought up was eft tapping so that's a technique that i kind of forgot about but i've used it intensely when i uh, went through my insomnia period. So tapping is definitely another thing that can help us reduce anxiety. So again, I would just uh, encourage you to search on Google or YouTube for tapping EFT, tapping methods. And um, that is very helpful as well. Um, what what I like about tapping as well is that it, it you do something with your hands. So if meditation seems like, oh, uh, this will never work for me because I can't, you know, my mind is always going and I can't concentrate. Well, tapping is nice because you're doing something with your hands. Um, the other thing that comes up for meditation is um, there's meditations where you have mantras and mudras. So mudras is where you have hand movements as well. So um, you might want to look that up on YouTube as well uh, to find some kind of meditation where you do something with your hands. Uh, just this morning, I did one. Um, I think it's uh, Sa Ta Na Ma. Sa Ta Na Ma. And that's Sanskrit and it stands for um, life, universe, death and rebirth, which is kind of fitting for what we're going through right now right life universe death rebirth and what you do is you tip your um, index finger with your thumb then your middle finger and your thumb ring finger and thumb and then the pinky so you move your fingers and always touch the thumb as you go so sa ta na ma sa ta Na, ma. So that for me works quite well as well because you're focusing not only what your mind does but also what your hands do. So that might be another option. Just breathing exercises, deep breathing um, is definitely what we need right now. Uh, anchoring ourselves to the ground, to Mother Nature. Gratitude journal. I Last week I couldn't do it, uh, but this week, now that I'm kind of dealing with the situation better, I w went out of the frozen state, I picked up my gratitude journal habit again. So really just focusing on the presence, what you already have right now and what you're grateful for right now. Um, I would also mention healthy eating. Uh, that is definitely part of our being. Now, uh, there's obviously an increased temptation to go for any kind of numbing. So whatever that is for you, uh, you know, it could be a bad food, it could be chips, it could be chocolate, it could be alcohol, it could be smoking. Um, just make sure that your body is in a healthy state right now. First of all, for the immune system, so that you have a healthy immune system right now, but also for your mental state. If you're, you know, eating badly, we all know that that has an, an impact on how you feel mentally and physically. It just, you, you don't want to feel um, 
you know, like a couch potato right now. That's just, that's just not where you want to go. So make sure you have healthy snacks available. Um, nuts um, are definitely a good choice. I actually also um, practice intermittent fasting. So I do about 15 hours of fasting. So I stop eating at seven at night and then I have uh, my milk, coffee and nuts at 10 um, in the morning. So that's about 15 hours. So, so yeah, I feel much more energized with that kind of, uh, it's not, it's not a diet because I'm eating the same things I always do. It's just that I'm taking a longer break and I'm giving my body and my cells more time to, to recover and to, um, you know, yeah, just focus inwardly as well. I think that's what, what intermittent fasting does. If you're interested in intermittent fasting, my friend Denise Wakeman has a great group on Facebook, um, Intermittent Fasting for Entrepreneurs. Uh, search for that. If you can't find it, send me a message and I uh, will definitely send you the link for that group. So that's the being. Um, and again, it's a dance between the being and the doing. So from the being, let's talk now about the doing. Um, what can we do to um, really make sure that we take care of our, our, our business as well? So the first thing that came up during the conversation yesterday was structuring your day. Uh, for a lot of us, we're already used to working from home. But right now, there's such a huge uh, majority of people who have never worked at home. So they're complete, completely new to this idea of having to structure their day and or get organized and all of that. So that's um, if you can help anyone, you know, your neighbors, your community to kind of guide them on how to structure their day. I think you're already being a big help. So so you know, share with them how you are structuring your day, uh, what you're doing, how you're getting organized. The other thing I mentioned is that now is probably a good time to get a good microphone for your computer so that you can really focus mainly on on distance coaching, uh, you know, working with your clients. And you do want to come over professionally right so having a good microphone right now and going forward um, I don't think it's just right now it really is going to be one of the main ways we communicate and so investing in a good microphone right now is is key so I'm hoping that it's not like the uh, the hand sanitizer and that on Amazon they're not running out of microphones but um, yeah if you can get yourself a good microphone for your computer. So yeah, those are kind of the general ideas. And then some kind of more specific ideas that uh, I came up with. Um, for example, right now, it's a good time to think about if you can turn any of your offerings into an online version. So an online course, an online webinar, a uh, an online um, well, even a podcast, right? Uh, launch a podcast. Right now is a great time to launch a podcast. Uh, my friend Melita just uh, launched her podcast. Um, and she said it was taking her about, I think, six weeks. So this is a great time also to invest in learning a new skill. So maybe you need to investigate and find out how do you launch a podcast and how can I get that done in these next four to six weeks, most likely, if not more, that we're being asked to stay at home. Another thing is scheduling podcast interviews. So we can't go out there networking or speaking on stages anymore, but we can continue to be guests on interviews so that is also a thing that you can do right now to share your know-how, to share your expertise, organize a webinar for your audience. These are free resources that you are sharing, but that those are like seeds that you're planting right now. Um, and, and those seeds will then, you know, bring you fruit 
um, hopefully by the fall, right? Uh, and, and right now, we just know that business is going to be slower, but that doesn't mean that we just need to give up. So now is the time to plant those seeds. Another idea is to read a lot of these business books that have been on your shelf for a long time or, or listen to them on Audible. Write a book. That's definitely one for, for myself, and I put that in there for myself. But maybe you are also one, um, you know, you have this idea of writing a book for a long time, and, and now uh, would be definitely a good time to get started and, uh, and investigate how, how do I uh, get started to write a book. So it's all about slowing down to plan future success. So more ideas are improving your website, working on your about page, improving your LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, if you need help with that, obviously you can reach out to me. Create a freebie. So if you don't have any free offer um, to build your email list, now is a great time to do that. Now is a great time to look at what you already have. Maybe you can turn a blog post into a free even just an audio, right? Give away an audio instead of an ebook. Whatever um, fits your superpowers. That that's what we talk a lot about in gentle marketing. Um, maybe writing is not your favorite um, medium, but maybe you want to use audio, and you could just create an audio file that you give away for free. So think about what could you do right now in order to grow your list in the future. Improve your systems right now as well. So look at your business, the way it's set up, and are there things that you could work on right now? So maybe you're accounting, uh, maybe you haven't uh, filed your taxes yet. Um, that's not part of the systems, but your accounting system, your course delivery system, your email system, project management. I just recently um, really got into Trello uh, and use it with my team. Um, so, so those are ideas to improve your systems. Now is also the time to reconnect with old clients, with peers, with uh, you know, obviously your family and friends, but really reconnect with people that, again, these are just little seeds right now, and you're not going to, you know, directly sell them anything, but they might lead to sales later on this year. So those are some ideas uh, on how to use your extra time. I also talked about saving or or just kind of in general the idea of money and where to save and where to invest because in times like these it's so easy and dangerous to fall into the trap of the scarcity mindset right I see it for myself right all these trainings got canceled and immediately I'm thinking what am I going to do? How am I going to sell more? How am I going to make up for this lost income? And and how, where can I save? What can I get rid of? And so it's it's easy to get into that scarcity mindset thinking that there's not enough. And actually talking about enough, you might want to check out episode 26 where I talk about this idea or this definition of what's are enough. And what I said yesterday uh, in this particular circumstance, we might have to reconsider our enough. We might have to reconsider how much we said at the beginning of the year or when we did our planning for 2020, uh, you know, we had this big income goal. Well, we might have to reconsider that and just go back to our enough. What's enough? This month? What is the... Uh, minimum that I need in order to pay my rent, pay my food. That's my enough right now. And then when we're back into normal circumstances, then yes, my enough will go up again because I do want to go to the gym. I do want to travel. I do want to pay myself a massage every now and then. So my enough will go up again. But right now we need to reconsider our enoughs. So, um, yeah, check out episode 26 if you're 
um, interested about this topic of enough. So again, back to going where to save. Uh, yes, it is definitely the time to trim unnecessary expenses. So any kind of tools, uh, subscriptions that you're not using anymore, networking memberships. So if you're part of any networking groups, associations, where maybe the deadline is coming up to renew right now, maybe it's not the good time to renew that because if you're paying for physical networking events that are all being canceled, well, maybe right now you hold back on that. So yeah, look at your expenses, but be mindful about what you need to trim and what is actually generating future growth. So I highly recommend that you don't cut growth expenses right now. So if you're working with a coach, now is not the time to cancel that, uh, that collaboration. Um, because right now you have extra time to work on things, uh, you know, on your website or whatever you're using your coach to help you with. So, so right now is not the time to cut those growth expenses. For example, I just, um, I'm talking to a book coach to help me for the next three months to kind of get to the next stage in my book writing. And I'm also hiring a coach to help me with uh, preparing uh, for a TEDx talk. So right now we have more time than we usually do. So it's time to invest in in our skills and in our business. And so it wouldn't be a good idea to, to cut these growth expenses right now. Always, of course, taking into consideration your enough. You still need to have enough to pay your rent and your, and your food and all these essential expenses. The other thing you can look at trimming is tasks, non-revenue generating tasks. So it's not just money, but also things that you do on a regular basis that take up time, but that if you really sit with them, you realize, well, they are not really ever generating revenue for me. So maybe you can kind of cut down on your social media interactions. I'm not saying cut it out completely. And if you're take, if you're experiencing great joy in doing those uh, activities, then, then don't cut them right now. But just th think about what, where you could cut in order to invest this time into activities that will uh, help future growth. So if you're always saying, oh, I never have time to create this freebie, well, now you maybe have this time and maybe it's kind of been just an excuse uh, that to say to yourself that you never have time so so now you really do have this time and so you may have to cut some other things in, in order to focus on that so that is um, where you can save either money or time but it's important to not fall into this trap of uh, you know scarcity and thinking that there is not enough the last thing we talked about on the call is different ways to collaborate. Right now is definitely the time where we need to collaborate in order to get through this together. There, there is no more time to isolate and think that we can do it all by ourselves. So reach out to peers, ask them what they're doing, offer ideas of collaboration or offer your help so that you can then ask for help in return because sometimes we realize that we are not daring to reach out because we are afraid of asking for help and uh, Jim brought this up on yesterday's call it's so important right now to offer help but also to dare to ask for help that's really what collaboration is all about right so how can you ask for help but in return also receive help um, come up with ideas to to give to your community maybe um, like yesterday I just received an email 
of, of someone who's offering her a course for free. So maybe that's one idea. And I actually thought, oh, that's a great idea. I have this course that we uh, recorded with um, my friend Lou Borton about video for introverts. And since video is so important right now, I'm also thinking of making that available for free. So things like that, come up with ideas on how you can help. And also what I said yesterday, it's, it's not... As gentle marketers, as gentle souls, we're already good at giving. So I don't need to, you know, teach you how to give. I need to actually teach you how to receive. So it's not the time to just give everything away for, for free. Nobody expects that. So there are certain small things that you can give away for free. Like this course, it just sits there on my drive so why not use this time to give away the, this course for free? I could not offer you know, all my LinkedIn services for free just because it's a tough time. Uh, what I could do is, yes, maybe put together a, a Zoom call and uh, you know, to a group and say, here's how you optimize your LinkedIn profile. So be still very focused on, yes, I want to give, but I also need to receive because in the end, I have bills to pay as well. So that's kind of what I wanted to share. Um, I think it's a good idea to just kind of take a deep breath right now and uh, just sitting with all of that. And I hope it has been helpful. I hope this gives you some ideas. Again, I plan to record some future raw episodes. Actually, what just comes up right now is this word raw, right? This is, this is a non-edited episode. It's just me in uh, my home office recording it. Andrea, my, my uh, business manager, is not editing this one. So it just goes out live to the world the way I recorded it. I think right now there is no time for perfection. Um, if you want to help and you have a way to help, you just need to get it out there. Whether you think it's perfect or you don't, it doesn't really matter in times like this. This uh, brainstorming, collaborative, sorry, collective brainstorming session, I didn't really have a plan. I just knew, I think this is what's needed right now. I threw together some slides um, and, and I put it out there. So that's what we're being asked as well is, is to let go of our perfectionism. Uh, business and life is different right now. Uh, none of the previous rules apply anymore. So if you can help put yourself out there, step over um, the fear and, and just offer your help. Thanks so much for tuning in uh, to this extra episode. Uh, as I said, the regular episodes will go out uh, on Fridays and I will continue to record these special episodes, um, not on a regular basis, but just whenever I feel like I have something to share or uh, maybe someone also I'm thinking I have friends in Italy, so, so maybe it'd be a good idea to record an episode with someone who is in Italy and is ahead of the curve and just kind of know how they're dealing with it and what already they're seeing that has changed. So stay tuned if you want to receive notifications of the new episodes. Uh, you need to be subscribed on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to the podcast on because those Raw episodes are not being published on my website. There's no show notes for them. So you need to uh, actually have it on your, on your phone. Thanks so much for tuning in again and uh, talk to you soon. Take care of yourselves.